I miss going live on Facebook. Um, I used to go live for an hour, hour and a half uh, before Facebook started throttling my views and throttling the reach of my content. You know, I've obviously been wanting to go live on YouTube. Just not sure if the stream would be great, but maybe I'll consider doing that there as well. What I didn't like about YouTube, of course, is the fact that um, the comments don't say stay after I upload the video. Uh, which makes me sad because at least on Facebook, the comments during the video would, would also stay afterwards. As my voice gets louder and as I find myself more, um, I realize how influential and impactful my voice can be and how I need to be responsible for what I say and how it affects people out there because so many people are impressionable, especially young men. And in South Africa and in the rest of the world, young men and boys really, really feel lost in 2023. And look, I have knowledge, I have experience, I've hurt women, I have been heartbroken, I've been depressed, I've made money, I've lost money, I've traveled around South Africa, around the SADC region, around the world, in certain countries. I've met very famous and influential people, very rich people. I've met um, amazing women, I've dated amazing women, and I'm a father of six beautiful children from four mothers, you know. I have been to therapy um, at different times, you know. I've been involved in, in violence. I've seen things that maybe some people will never see in their lives. Horrendous, terrific things. I've buried my father. Um, I've helped grow with my mother and with my siblings, you know, trying to build my father's children and build a, a community you know, calling myself a god, calling myself a king, being a pro-black activist to being a non-racialist. And I've studied a lot of books, watched a lot of documentaries, of course, had engagements with a lot of people. So I have a lot of information and knowledge and my own experiences, you know, I'm qualified. I'm a qualified somebody. I've worked in corporate and I've run my own businesses. I don't have all the answers and it's a, it's a difficult journey and it's almost unfair for me to even advise young boys at the age of 36 because when you're 16, when you're 18, when you're 20, when you're 25, when you're 30, life is very different and I can speak for myself where now I'm a voice. It would have been very difficult to listen to all the, all the gents because a lot of them are not relatable and a lot of them speak from a point of view of a space they are in in their lives and they almost never are able to connect with us come on dog i'm i'm hot i'm fucking 16 i'm 18 i've got blood rushing through my body i'm in good health i can run for fucking five hours girls love me i've got my whole life to experience so who are you to try and guide me when you made your mistakes and if you claim you're a good man today it's probably because of your experiences. Let me burn like you burnt. And I obviously worry about four boys. I've got two girls, or Africa, or culture, Ganyas. And I worry about how to build them and make them strong without them necessarily having to go through some of the tough things that I went through. And if it's even possible, is it possible to build strong children without them going through their own struggles? Or can I manufacture struggles so that at least I can kind of handle them as they fall, you know, and it's not, when I think of my life, well, I'm, I've got a very strong mind and it's, it's been built over time. But when I think of my life, for most people, at any given time, I could have made one, two, three decisions that could have landed me in jail, that could have landed me killing someone, that could have gotten me killed. Um, that could have led me to running a gang that could have led to me, I don't know, becoming a famous politician, going overseas, hurting a woman physically to a point where she's in a hospital or dead. Um, and certain things, my mind, maybe my experiences, maybe the environment I was in, maybe some of my training helped protect me from that. So many men are killing themselves, taking their lives. Ricky Rick, of course. Double HP. And there are more, boy. More men who have this noise in their head because they, they broke. They're struggling everywhere they go. I mean, I imagine myself, if I was uglier, how my self-confidence would be. 
if I was naturally fat, how my confidence would be. If I couldn't articulate myself and speak well, and, and if I wasn't academically great at school, if I didn't have the options of going back to corporate and working in banking, if I couldn't write books and sell the books that I sell, if I couldn't do speaking engagements, if I couldn't manage property for rental, if I couldn't hustle and sell t-shirts, if I couldn't sell Burovos rolls, if I didn't have all these options and if girls didn't just like me, and if I didn't have healthy children, good looking healthy children from beautiful, healthy, strong mothers, what would happen if I didn't have those advantages? If anywhere in my confidence armor, there are chinks, what would that do to my mind considering I've been depressed? Imagine if I was depressed, ugly, fat, broke, with no family, waking up in a shack, not knowing where the fuck my life is going. I have so many young men that DM me on a regular basis, asking, Pen, if you have anything, Khrudman, please, please plug me, I'll do anything. I'll, I'll, I want to shadow you. You don't even need to pay me as long as I can come stay with you and eat. It breaks my heart. I wish I had a huge, huge complex where I could tell everyone, come through. Let's wake up in the morning. Let's exercise. Let's, let's do speaking. Let's, you're 25. I'll take you back to school and let's reinforce the maths. Let's reinforce the English, the writing. Let me make you strong again. Let me build your confidence. But you need to work out. You need to look good. You need to lose weight so that your mind can be healthy as well. Because healthy mind, I mean, healthy body, healthy mind. And let me teach you how to sell. Let me show you. Let me show you how to sell. Let me show you how to go on social media and advertise some shit. Let me show you how to maybe try some of these trading things. Let me show you how to mack on a girl and take rejection and go over and over and be rejected over and over. Boys today are even scared of rejection and not even speaking to a girl face to face, chatting to her over social media or text. Ah, dog, she blue ticked me. Ah, she's ghosting me. Ah, dog, she told me she's not interested. Fuck, I'm so miserable. We used to have girls tell us in our faces, hey, get away from me. What? You think you want to be with me? And Gabanga, this is me, I'm telling you. And I'm told you, I think I'm a decent looking guy. I think I speak relatively well. I had good achievements. I was a sportsman. I was this and that. I could afford my own way. What about the next guy who's got nothing but who would also like to have a quality woman? And the powers that be have created these systems where to break through, you have to be either be unique, uniquely intelligent, uniquely talented and a sportsman, uniquely gifted as a singer or as an actor. Otherwise, you're fucked. And the next thing that's left is crime. Which we all frown upon. Oh, crime is so bad. Crime is bad if you have advantages to make money in a good way. There are people that don't look good and can model. There are people that didn't do well at school and therefore could get into tertiary and get a good job. There are people that aren't politically connected and can get tenders from their ANC mates. There are people that aren't athletically gifted and they can just get on sports field or in a court and just fuck shit up. There are guys that have none of that. So what about them? What must they do? Ah, they must make a plan. Their plan is crime. And we fucking judge them. And it's wrong. They want the same quality life that we have, but the systems have been built for an elite group. You're either naturally talented or your parents happen to have created some space for you or you're the beneficiary of past crimes. You've got white people in South Africa and the rest of the world who are like, yeah, but I work hard. You work hard on a platform where your ancestors came and killed and enslaved and exploited the indigenous peoples. And you believe that we can play fair. Get the fuck out of here, man. So what's left is crime. And if you're not committing crime, your, your mind implodes. And when it implodes, the next thing that's left is drugs. To numb the pain. To escape. Alcohol. To numb the pain. To escape. Once there's drugs in the system, once there's alcohol in the system, the mind fucks out. And when you fuck out, crime... Rape, hurting others, hurting yourself. Because you are, you are not in yourself. You are not sane anymore. You are in this monster thing inside your head. And when you try to speak, no one wants to hear you. But Upenwe at 36, oh, he's a vodcast. Everyone sees him. Ah, oh, black pen, black pen, next eh? You know, women are like, oh, he's good looking. Oh, I like his eyebrows. Other people are like, hey, I used to work with this guy. This guy was fucking smart at school. Other people are like, hey... I've done business with this guy. He's moved me or he's loaned me money or he's sold me something. I've got all these great advantages and other people are like, hey, fuck you, dog. Black pain on my sim. You have all these advantages and you don't understand my pain. I'm a 20-something-year-old 
I'm a 25 year old, I'm a 30 year old, I don't have the advantages you have. At least your mom was a school teacher, a deputy principal. As much as ah, she was a single mom, you guys had a salary, you knew where your food was coming from. You've also got support, you've got your brother. Another good looking, strong change, you've got your sister, good looking girl. You've got your whole extended family on your mother's side, on your, on your father's side that love you and that are willing to help you. You've got friends, I don't have that, dog. Dog. So what the fuck must I do? I have to commit crime. I have to lie. I have to get a grant. I have to get into politics. I have to be pro ANC because it's the only fucking space where I could potentially make money without being smart, without being athletically gifted, without being good looking. But his own judge, fucking privileged swine. Part of my generation's issue is um, lack of sexual discipline. Myself included. I'm not innocent. I've got six children, four mothers. That's not ill discipline. I need to highlight all my children were planned. I was with the mothers of my kids. Beautiful, strong women. They were no oopsie. And I'm busy sleeping around and kids are popping out now. That's not me. But I have been a victim of sexual ill discipline because I'm like everyone else. And fuck, dog. Chicks dig me. So if there's a pretty chick there, and look, I'm lucky because I actually have standards. Standards? I have a criteria. Let me put it that way. If there's a pretty girl there that wants me, I'm not just going to fucking get with her. I actually pick, and I normally like girls who are creative, who are smart, where we can hold a conversation. Normally girls from functional homes who have like both parents, because then we can have like healthy conversations. But you can imagine that even with all of that, the amount of people the rest of us sleep with, and when you're sleeping with people, it means you're not working. It means you're taking the best form of your energy and you're putting it into a physical form where even if you're not making a child, you're doing nothing. You're fucking coming inside a condom or you're coming inside her and she's going to take morning afters and other contraceptives that probably have side effects and are fucking her body and her mind up in ways that she doesn't know. But these are the hard conversations we need to have because if we're going to build a better society, if we're going to build better families, we need to have some of these hard conversations. How do we build healthier people, but obviously keep some kind of struggle so that even if we become rich and famous and successful and good looking, we still know the value of hard work. We still know how to defend our families and our communities. We know how to shoot a gun. We know how to fight. We build our bodies. We're strong. We sometimes go out into nature. We go into tough terrain so that we can build ourselves up to be strong human beings. So that when people that come from real struggle, real struggle come through and think they can fuck with us because oh with these cheese boys they've got another thing coming like let me show you what a cheese boy can do when i need to put him cook in put him cook in pilang brown brown loaf as a shop right pilang a tin fish kule khuzuga nilwa hamu chonja bamba 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 bandi nkunzi so to us a penwe baba nina no cheese it's on the land so nko bisu cheese because some of us understand that we have valuable things that we have and that we've built and we're willing to defend them in various ways. But something has to give, man. Men are four times more likely to commit suicide than women. And it's because they are broke. They don't have money. They don't have skills. The world is saying, empower women. Leave the men behind. Men are not working out. Men are not getting sunlight. They're on their phones, escaping to social media. There are no jobs. No one's teaching them how to grow their own food. No one's teaching them how to work with their hands and build things. And if you don't have money, if you don't have looks, and if you're not athletic, you're nothing. And no woman wants you. So that also fucking frustrates you. End up going to buy prostitutes and getting STIs, HIV, AIDS. You die. Maybe you go into crime. End up in jail. Or you might get raped. Or you end up killing someone. <laughs> hey, wow. So I need to use my voice. I need to use my voice to speak to people. And because I'm in South Africa, it means I need to speak his In time, hopefully I'll have subtitles. Shout out to Kwezi Ndovu, a young gent who I'm going to be working with more closely moving forward. So we'll try and get the subtitles and the dubbing. But close to 12 million, if not over 12 million speakers of Isizul in South Africa. And I need to speak to those people because they're the bulk of our nation. And if I can't try and help and save them and enlighten and empower them, then what the fuck am I doing? And turn up for it. Got a lot of work to do and it starts with self. Work on you. Work on you. 
And then bring your brothers and your sisters and your mothers and your fathers and your uncles and your aunts and your cousins close to you and you say, Asambeni. Sisempini. Asambeni. Pin you all the black pin. Shut up.